welcome. I'm Kritika Saxena. Welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special interview. I have with me Prashant Tuya. He is uh, camera shy, but uh, very candid off camera. Thank you so much, Prashant, for talking to us in a very rare interview. Firstly, why do you shy away from the camera so much? You're never on camera. I think this is the second interview in five years. Well, we, we have to have something serious to talk about, so <laughs> today is a great occasion to be here. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, as far as the SR Oil and Rosneft deal is concerned, uh, the one point that was unclear was the exact price per share and the exact price and the amount and premium that will be given to the minority shareholders uh, that had tendered during the delisting. I believe you have the details for us. Yes, I think uh, we, we needed a day to just make sure that all the, the advisors got the correct numbers. We are coming up, we have come out with the numbers today. Hmm. Uh, we are uh, going to pay an additional rupees 75 yeah. uh, to uh, the individual retail shareholders. That would take the delisting price, if you remember, was 262 rupees a share. Yeah. So approximately a 30% premium hmm. uh, will be paid within the stipulated 60 days hmm. uh, uh, to all of the shareholders who participated in the delisting process. Okay. Uh, I mean, this just to give you some background, yeah. this yeah. values the company, the equity value of the company at about 50,000 crores. Hmm. And uh, if you remember when the company was listed yeah. back in 1995, the market cap of the company was about 2,000 crores. Hmm. So uh, we, have, we have seen a growth of, uh, of a market cap from nearly 2,000 crores hmm. to 50,000 yeah. crores at the time of the completion of this transaction. Okay, so that makes the current uh, price per share of the deal at 338 Point two rupees per share, right. which is a thirty percent premium, as you were saying. Right. The additional amount of eight hundred and eighty crore rupees is going to be paid in one tranche, or will yes. there be multiple tranches? No, it will be paid in one tranche within the sixty days, as mm. stipulated by SEBI. Okay. Any regulatory laws that are required here, or no. all the approvals? We have all the we have all the necessary approvals. Of course, okay. we have to keep all the regulatory uh, body, I mean SEBI and everybody informed. Hmm. But uh, we have the we have all the approvals to go ahead and hmm. and you know and do this. Yeah. Okay. This is really the first time. Yeah. That uh, even nearly two years after the delisting, hmm. we are rewarding uh, hmm. the retail shareholders. Hmm. Uh, I think it's quite unique in hmm. Indian corporate history. Hmm. Probably another first for this transaction. <laughs> okay, fair enough. The other points that we wanted clarifications on. Now, the total debt that is going to be transferred, Prashant, uh, was $5.4 billion that will be going to Rosneft. Uh, I wanted a clarification as far as the Iran component is concerned. You confirmed yesterday that that will be a part of the deal. Yes. But is that a part of that debt component as well? No, that's, that oh, that's independent. Okay. That's a so is that the debt, the debt reduction which we are doing is of 70,000 crores hmm. is really in two parts. One part is at the holding company where we'll uh, they, they pay off about $5 billion which is about 32,000 crores and the rest is at the operating company hmm. again in two parts. One which is getting transferred to hmm. the uh, uh, new shareholders and a portion of that about 4,000 crores which is getting repaid. Hmm. So in, in reality what's getting repaid hmm. is about 36,000 crores okay. to all of the banks. The 32,000 at the holding company hmm. and the 4,000 at the operating company. Got it. And the rest is getting transferred. Correct. And um, yeah, and of this component hmm. of 70,000, nearly 50,000 crores is actually with Indian banks hmm. Hmm. Uh, in the Indian yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. So, I, you know, there was in all the coverage which has come, hmm. that there has been some confusion around this. There has. So I thought I'll clarify. Okay. So I, I, I wanted to understand where does this Iran deal fit in? Is this something that is it's a part, part of, of the, the current deal? assets and current liability adjustment, which would, okay. which is customary for any transaction, hmm. because when you have an enterprise valuation, hmm. uh, you have to net off the debt and you have to hmm. net off the uh, current asset, current liability uh, calculation. Hmm. So is that and, and, that it will, and it's part of that. It's, it's part of that. It will get it will get uh, uh, paid out shortly uh, within the next few weeks. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be paid out from SRS end, right? Yes. Okay. What's the total value? Because there have been multiple figures. Is it 2.1 billion? Yeah, in dollars? that range. Exactly. In that range. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as the debt reduction from SR Global's point is concerned, you just gave me a breakup. I wanted some more clarity. There is a VTB that's going to be paid, which is yes, the so majority of the lenders uh, who are getting paid are VTB, ICICI and Access. Access. Yeah. Can you give me a breakup? Is VTB uh, is VTB taking a haircut uh, on the payout that you'll be, you'll be giving them? So I think <laughs> it's good you ask this question. Hmm. No bank. Hmm. who has received the 70,000 crores hmm. has even taken a one rupee haircut. 
They haven't. No. Okay. So there how is much no, is VTT? I don't know where this is where this is coming from. Yeah, there I tell is, you why. There's the, no, no, there is no haircut on interest. There's no haircut on principal. There's no haircut period. So can you tell me how much is VTB getting in ICICI? I don't want to give you the specific exactly. numbers because it's okay. not uh, it's not right. But I okay. think ICICI has already come out saying that That's the group exposure, exposure of ours down. with ICICI will come down hmm. by nearly 50%. And hmm. let me just say that for many of the large banks, hmm. SBI, Axis, hmm. you know, the other banks whom we've mentioned, uh, our group exposures are coming down in that order of magnitude, okay. uh, you know, nearly 50% range. Okay. For for, even for the other banks. Exactly. Hmm. VTB as well? Would it be more? VTB would be much more. Much more, yeah. right? So I'll tell you why this haircut question came in. Uh, the reported figure uh, back when the bridge note was taken was about $3.9 billion. And now there was a conversation that uh, there were reports that said that the payout now is $3.2 billion. As a result of that, there was the question that there is a haircut that has been taken. No, right? there is no haircut. Okay. Uh, the other point is the SR oil lenders that have been paid. You've clarified a $600 million, roughly 4,000 crore rupees. Uh, LIC is a part of it. What is this agreement with LIC? Rosneft said that till they are make, given the entire payment, they're going to remain on the board. But I was under the impression majority of the payment has been made. What is the agreement with LIC? No, I, I, uh, basically, uh, earlier this week, the payments have been made. Hmm. And uh, some of the other banks who are getting paid the 4,000 will get paid uh, during this week. Hmm. And... Uh, you know, whatever exposure hmm. they had hmm. to the SR oil entity, hmm. uh, that has been uh, that has been prepaid in full. In full. So LIC has been prepaid in full. Yes. Correct. Any of the other lenders that have been prepaid in full that you can mention? All of these four thousand crores will get prepaid this week. This so week, yeah, yes. absolutely. So okay. I mean, this is a done deal. These numbers are hmm. after the deal, not before the deal. So okay. I think the the speculation can. Can stop. It's, okay. This is done. Right? Okay, very good. Uh, another clarity I wanted was on the non compete figure. Uh, uh, Rosneft yesterday said, and I'm going to quote to you that um, when we, they were asked on non compete, they said that SR cannot build a refinery or petrol station. There is a non compete forever. Now that caused a lot of confusion, which SR then clarified that the non compete is three years. Why this difference in common? I'm not sure uh, what we've agreed is what we've clarified. Okay. Uh, we will talk to Rosneft and uh, hmm. see whether we can get them to also hmm. issue a clarification. Okay. Yeah. So what but, is the, the, but the situation is clear. It's a hmm. three-year non-compete. Okay. Uh, and after that, you are free to, if you were to look at entering. So are you yeah. looking at getting back into the refining? No, there is no, the there's no such plan right now. But hmm. we are, uh, we continue to stay invested hmm. in the oil and gas space. Okay. Uh, we continue to have a uh, presence in the exploration production hmm. piece of the business, which we have uh, uh, retained. Hmm. which includes our coal bed methane yeah. facilities hmm. uh, and blocks and hmm. we continue to be in the refinery hmm. uh, and retail business in the, UK, yeah. in the UK. Exactly. Okay. Can you talk to me a little bit more about what's the plan there? Is there in terms of you know the capacity that you have, uh, capacity utilization for Stanlo, what are you looking at in terms of expansion? Are you looking at further financial muscle being put in over here? So it's very, I mean actually Stanlo uh, is, a, is a refinery we acquired uh, from Shell. Uh, mm. A few years ago, mm. since acquisition, we have actually we we, we have actually invested uh, close to 600 million dollars mm. in upgrading the refinery. Uh, you know, uh, improving the environmental and safety standards, which are very crucial, mm. uh, and uh, and and basically improving the efficiency of the of the asset mm. uh, with very good results. Uh, mm. The refinery is today amongst the top quartile refineries uh, in Europe. Hmm. Uh, and we have about a 15% market share currently in the UK uh, business fuel fuel business. Hmm. Uh, we, we are recent. We are currently investing an additional 250 million dollars hmm. in upgrading the refinery early next year, hmm. uh, and that's a capex uh, program for upgrade and also for the major turnaround, okay. which is expected, which will further enhance the capacity of the refinery. Hmm. So yeah, we continue to stay invested hmm. uh, in the in the refining business and in the in the UK refinery. Hmm. And uh, and we are uh, we I mean we, we that's that's been our philosophy, right? So yeah. we we like to we like to have the assets uh, you know best in class and um, uh, in the top quartile hmm. of of its of our competition hmm. as we had SR oil. Yeah, exactly. The other uh, clarity that I wanted, Prashant, was the point on uh, royalty. There is a royalty payment that will be made on the 3,500 petrol pumps by Rosneft to SR. Is there a time limit to it? And can you give us some clarity on how much would the royalty be on an annual basis? So, 
uh, BSR brand uh, was being yeah. paid a royalty even earlier by SR Royal. The royalty remains the same. Okay. And basically, uh, Rosneft, Trafigura, and UCP have elected to continue with the SR brand hmm. uh, for now. Hmm. Uh, there is no specific time period fixed. Hmm. It is uh, uh, it's up to them to to decide okay. how long they would like to keep it. So till they have the brand, till they, they have, have the brand, the if they continue to so pay the brand. What's the amount exactly? Uh, we have not come out with the numbers, but okay. basically it's the same as what um, as what uh, SR Oil was paying. Mm -hmm. Uh, as are earlier. So it's the same, nothing has changed hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I mean we are very happy that um, that uh, Rosneft has elected to, you know, to continue hmm. to use the brand because hmm. the retail outlets yeah. which we have built, there is a, there is a significant, uh, there is a significant brand pool yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, which are there and, and that's what they have recognized. Let's talk about SR Global. Right. Uh, where do things stand in terms of debt? What is the exact quantum? It's being brought down by 70,000. You give us a breakup. 70,400 rupees is the total amount that has been. What is it at currently? And what's the plan now? So I think uh, we'll talk about SR going forward. It, the story is not about the debt. Okay. The story mm -hmm. is about what is the business and what's the growth mm -hmm. which we see. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, with, the, with this transaction, we have completed uh, the demonetiz demonetization hmm. program which we had. Yeah. Uh, we have significantly delevered our balance sheet, hmm. and we now have the ability to uh, reinvest in the rest of our portfolio. Hmm. And the rest of the portfolio is 75% of our hmm. overall yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, rest of the portfolio continues to have a revenue in the current year of about 15 billion dollars. Hmm. Uh, the rest of the portfolio covers all of the sectors which we had earlier, which includes uh, oil and gas, uh, the two businesses which we, we talked about, hmm. metals and mining, hmm. uh, infrastructure and services. Hmm. And so we are looking at these, at these businesses as a time uh, where we have completed our consolidation, hmm. we have completed our monetization, hmm. we've got a stronger balance sheet, hmm. and now we're looking at, uh, at growing these businesses uh, in India, given that in India, we still have uh, a lot of growth potential hmm. in these sectors, which we believe we are very well positioned hmm. to take advantage of. Okay. You know, the reason I asked you, Prashant, is uh, that till date, the focus has been on deleveraging, demonetizing the entire business, uh, looking at uh, specific investors, bringing in capital, so on and so forth. So, I want to understand exactly where you are with respect to debt and what is the plan to handle that overhand? Because the fact is that there is still a substantial amount of debt on the group books right now. I don't, I don't, we don't see it that way. Uh, you can't have what's assets, the amount, what's the you amount? can't have assets uh, built in the infrastructure space without debt. Hmm. I mean, the question is, are the earnings hmm. and in capable of servicing the debt? Hmm. And we believe going forward that hmm. uh, our debt is now fully serviceable Hmm. Uh, with the earnings which we will have from the rest of the business. Okay. We have, as I mentioned, delivered the holding companies pretty much substantially. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the operating companies, hmm. which are th many of our companies are actually debt-free companies. Hmm. For example, the SR Oil UK refinery is a debt-free yeah. asset. Yeah. Many, many, many other assets are debt-free assets. Hmm. Of course, those are never spoken about. Hmm. But, uh, but, you know, uh, we believe that the debt has now been brought down Hmm. to a level which it can be managed, hmm. barring SR Steel, hmm. where yeah. we will, where we are going through a process hmm. uh, and we, we believe that the restructuring uh, should be done now in a time-bound manner. Okay. Um, is the debt currently at, uh, you know, I don't know if these figures are correct, but what was reported was that the debt is now down to 1.3 lakh crore rupees. Is that correct? No, no. Absolutely What's not the correct. Exact we've all, we've, I know you're trying to get me to give a number. Yes. And, <laughs> and the reality is that uh, what we've said is hmm. that the 70,000 crores which we have brought down is more than 50% of our overall debt. So that pretty much gives you uh, hmm. a fair a fair idea of where we are. Hmm. And we and and as I said, those that number is now a sustainable okay. debt number, barring SRT, which okay. we we hope to okay. we hope to address. Uh, last point on this: is there a, is there a need or requirement to refinance or restructure the remaining portion of the debt right now? As I said, principal, the principal asset hmm. which we need to do that is uh, is the steel business, okay. and that's already in, in the works. Okay. 
So I understand that uh, you know the, the steel business is right now going through the insolvency process, and you know there will be a proposal that is going to be discussed. But uh, what are the favourable options that you are looking at? Well, firstly, um, you know, SR Steel hmm. uh, got into difficulty primarily because hmm. uh, uh, the natural gas, hmm. which was allocated by the government of India, was suddenly disconnected, yeah. and that that created a problem where nearly for a period of three and a half years hmm. the steel plant remained uh, virtually operating at only 30 percent hmm. of its capacity. This is a problem which many many sectors are facing yeah. where uh, contracts which have been steel companies have seen. contracts which have been signed um, for various reasons whether hmm. it's the courts or whether it is other reasons uh, are suddenly getting reneged on hmm. and the aftermath is having to be dealt with Hmm. by the companies and by the banks. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, we, that's, that's prin the principal reason for uh, SR Steel uh, having, uh, having this issue and, and uh, we've got past that now. Hmm. Uh, we believe we, we have now got... You increased the ca capacity utilization as well. Right, correct? capacity utilization has gone up. Hmm. Uh, we are now operating closer to 80% of capacity hmm. and, um, and natural gas is now being Hmm. Uh, got from international sources, basically yeah. LN LNG, yeah. and we we moved on. But the hmm. hurt, but the real problem which we faced hmm. was because of this because yeah. of this uh, contract which got reneged uh, on hmm. by the government. Uh, having said that, we are now in we are now in this uh, process, and uh, you know we we have as you know we were talking to the banks earlier hmm. for a restructuring, yeah. and uh, and as has been clarified by many people, hmm. this process also uh, gives us the opportunity to restructure hmm. our debt hmm. uh, and uh, but do it in a time bound manner hmm. and do it within the confines of the IBC process okay you're confident that the that the whole procedure of inviting bids is not going to hamper your plans for SR steel no i mean we've gone through that even hmm. even during the restructuring hmm. we went through the same process, process exactly so hmm. it's it's no different hmm. uh, um, and yeah we've been through that once before it, it has to be done. It's part of the process hmm. mandated under IBC hmm. and uh, yes, we are, we are confident of providing hmm. uh, a resolution plan which is, which is uh, you know, which is, okay. uh, I can't say the best, but course, hopefully, yeah. hopefully uh, uh, will be, will be uh, amongst the best. Okay. I'm not going to bother you about names because I, I know you won't answer, but do you have bidders backed up as and when the bidding starts, are there bidders that you have been able to shortlist that have supported you right now? No, we are going to we are going to put in a proposal you are. as SR, not as, as SR? not okay. as bidders. Yeah. Okay. No. So you are going to participate. Yeah, as I, and I when also the mentioned that the hmm. transaction which we have just done hmm. also provides us the firepower to do hmm. it and hmm. to invest. Hmm. Uh, and you know, one of the investments will be uh, one of the investments if required is SR Steel. So okay. that's. That's that's part of the process of having a stronger balance sheet and mm -hmm. the ability to uh, invest, uh, reinvest in our okay. businesses. Okay, I'm very glad you said that. Would I be pushing my luck if I asked you how much? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Too early. Okay, fair enough. Uh, SR Power. Lastly, um, what are the plans there? Because I believe that a substantial amount of debt reduction has gone through, but there is still 20,000 crore rupees. There is also a plan to be able to expand the capacity. What is the outlook over there? No, we've largely completed most of the projects hmm. uh, in in uh, power, hmm. and um, and we have 5,000 megawatts hmm. of power. Yes. So, whenever you talk about debt, hmm. you also need to talk about what is the the assets behind it, hmm. and what is the total investment. Hmm. The total investment in the power sector is 30,000 crores. Yeah. And there is about 10 to 12,000 crores of equity, hmm. which has also been invested okay. uh, alongside alongside the debt. So that hmm. if you look at the total equity invested and the total debt, hmm. it's probably in the ratio of you know two is to one. Okay. Hmm. So uh, the sector is facing some hmm. couple of the areas in our portfolio are facing some challenges yeah. uh, because of again because of contracts which have got uh, yeah. reneged on. I mean, we had a couple of coal mines which got cancelled. Hmm. Uh, and that affected uh, one or two of the projects which we have, uh, and they need to be addressed along with the rest of the uh, industry. Yeah. Uh, but the, the larger issue in my mind for power right now in the sector mm -hmm. is the increase of demand, mm -hmm. and that's something which has not happened at yeah. the pace yeah. which one was expecting, and mm -hmm. that's leading to uh, you know such low tariffs mm -hmm. 
hmm. right now hmm. which are which are being difficult for the industry to absorb okay uh, what's the kind of outlook that you have as far as turnaround for power is concerned no, i mean i, I don't uh, yeah I, I think uh, uh, the turnaround will happen the moment we start seeing a pick up in demand hmm. uh, and demand is is something which now hmm. uh, with all the measures the government has taken yeah that's the next one which okay. that's the next indicator okay. of growth and pick up in the economy okay. and we are all awaiting that i can't say when i can't <laughs> say how much but we are all hoping that very shortly we'll see that okay sr shipping no plans for delisting no not no? none right now okay yeah. last question before we wrap up um, we've spoken about the road ahead uh, what's the next big bet that sr will make demonetize monetization uh, deleveraging debt and i know how tired you get of listening to that word debt over and over again <laughs> so i think uh, again i come back hmm. we've seen significant value which has been created in our portfolio hmm. in the past hmm. and we are excited because we believe the rest of the portfolio which we have also have similar value creation and growth opportunities hmm. so there's no you know we're not trying to change the whole uh, game plan here hmm. the game plan here is to continue to stay focused on the sectors which we are yeah. and the game plan is to create value in these sectors hmm. and the game plan is to grow in these sectors hmm. pretty much like what we've done in sr oil and delivered and pretty much like what we did hmm. in telecom hmm. and both those sectors during a period of time hmm. were not looking that exciting hmm. uh, and then you know we saw a big turn around yeah. uh, in telecom we mm. saw a big turn around in the oil and gas business mm. in the refining business and i'm confident that uh, you know we see these similar opportunities but and and that turn around has already started in many of the sectors mm. Mm. the commodity cycle is much better now yeah. than what it was uh, mm. a couple of years ago so mm. uh, how, how long are you going to give yourself 5 years to be able to reach a a significant no, scale in terms of value much, creation no i i don't think so i think our capital expenditure program is completed okay um we are we are we have a stronger Uh, we are in a much better position today after this transaction hmm. and we look forward to uh, the next few years uh, you know as uh, as any as any other investor would as any other group would uh, with the opportunities which we have in front of us okay have the last 2 3 years been difficult prashant no they've been challenging of course it hmm. be it be not fair to say that hmm. they've been challenging but you know that's that's what you go through if you make uh, you know these large uh investments and yeah. you know these are like these are sectors which go through cycles mm. and if you want to be a player in these sectors you have to be prepared <laughs> to go through the cycle so uh, we've been through it in the past yeah uh and yeah i mean any regrets something you could have done differently no i i mean i guess no, mm. nobody could have foreseen some of the problems which yeah. some of these sectors have gone through yeah. because of the regulation and because of the courts Hmm. Uh, I think that's been a learning for everybody yeah, who's been yeah. in these sectors. No, that's true. And investing in these sectors going forward, obviously hmm. you will be mindful of these additional yeah. risks yeah. which which we probably didn't see earlier. Okay. And that that would make us us and everybody else who's investing in these hmm. sectors a little bit more conservative <laughs> on their on their projections. But other than that, no. I think it's once bitten a few times shy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prashant, for that comprehensive interview. That was Prashant Chowdhury in a very rare interview. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.